Hi, yeah, it's Anya here. Uh, look at link, links below if you want to know more about me. Um, so this rocking horse has been on the go for a, about a week now behind me. And if you've seen it so far, you might you might have wanted me to stop at stage one, which I kind of look back, looking back, think I could have done. But uh, I'm kind of enjoying the struggle with it as well. And so I'm not even looking at the rocking horse today now, but there's a few things that I feel I need to address. Like it seems, to, well, there's one thing really. I feel like the background needs to be sorted in some clear way. And I've been looking at different colors, like it's stuck on different yellows, kind of like that yellow. But um, and it, then I tried that yellow, but I thought that was too garish altogether. And then I came across some blue this morning. That's blue collage piece. And I thought, actually, I quite like that color. It's a bit more subdued. So I've got that in paint and I think I'm going to use acrylic paint to paint the background in. Starting at the top corner, work, working my way down. And I want to do it so that it's going to be nice and clean at the edge here. There's something, um, I think it needs kind of clarity, you know, where the rocking horse is kind of chaotic and brush marks and, and collage and everything. Uh, I think the rest of it then is calling for some order. And so what I'm going to do first here is put on masking tape in a vertical. I better get this vertical, no, the framework goes nuts if, I, if the verticals in the painting aren't really vertical. Well, he doesn't go nuts, but he just says, you know, on your command. So there we are. I think that's vertical, right. And what I want to do is bring the paint up to meet that nice collage and everything here now. So I'm hoping, actually, you know, that corner there with it being so bright yellow, I think I will, sorry tumbling over myself. What I was going to say is that I'm hoping the blue will cover that mostly, but I think here I'm going to put some some white acrylic on first because to me it looks as though that's a bit too bright to cover with one coat. It's a bit like um, Erin. She's painting her, Erin's painting her bedroom at the moment and her friends were all around yesterday. The bath is full of white emulsion and trees and, and paint brushes and everything and they're of course covered in it themselves. Um, and she's got a few more friends roped into coming around today paint so they've got the um, undercoat done and they're going to be doing probably two more coats I'd say today but her colour isn't isn't far off the colour that I'm painting on here this what's it called Wedgwood system three acrylic Wedgwood it's also kind of East Lothian sky these days <laughs> and it was handy for the landscape day to have something that I could just quickly play for the sky. I know some purists would be saying, for God's sake, mix your sky colours. I would, I would generally, but <clears throat> in the swift, in the quick paintings, I like using, you know, collage and a colour that's already mixed that represents. So I'm trying to get there quickly is the thing, I guess. Now I'm gonna need to take some care here. I want it to cleanly establish the edge of the rocking horse. So I guess the hindquarters there are going to be a little bit lower than the seat of the horse, the saddle. But I'd imagine they'll probably do something on the saddle to bring it up a little bit higher again. And in the same way, I'm going to do something more to that tail as well. So I may kind of obliterate it with the blue and then retrieve it with either a splash of acrylic paint or I was even considering using, I won't be able to find it now, oh well, here, uh, I was even considering using this bit of um, music, let me just bring it closer. Yeah, so I was thinking of using this little bit of um, tissue paper that's got music, no, music and notes on it, what do you think? It might be just the thing, let's see. Okay. But you know, something something about this painting was kind of getting a bit a bit drawn out and um, I was looking at it again and again thinking, for God's sake, something big needs to shift here to keep me interested. And um, there we are, just adjusting the tripod. And I'm kind of happy with how that's looking. I'll take off the masking tape before you go. So I'm doing the cross-hatched thing rather than single direction so that it still has a bit of a liveness to it and I find that the cross hatching has a way of 
creating a more opaque surface because <clears throat> the directions of the brush, brush stroke catch the light. And um, <clears throat> catch the light and make them read as either brighter or darker. And when they're cross hatched, I think it subdues both, so it's just a mid tone. Something like that. It also feels good physically. A bit lively. Now I was wondering about down here because I'm not so clear about the position of the leg and if it'll look weird if I really clearly outline it. Let me just try that and see. You see the thing is I would want to kind of be looking again at the horse if I was going to be adjusting things like the anatomy. <clears throat> but I just want to see if I were to put some background colour here for example. I love these brushes, they're the burgundy brush set from um, Royal and Langnico, and uh, they're nice and bright. You know, they're quite. Um, they come to a fine edge, and they're quite stiff. Now, so I can get a clean edge with them. In the same way as I like using the flat brushes for the watercolor. Okay. Yeah. So I'm kind of happy enough with that. So I'm gonna. Squeeze out some paint so that I've got some that I can push up to create a nice clean edge here. I'm kind of half looking at the rocking horse as well. There's a bit of the... Actually, there's a thing that's um, coming from there that's holding the leg in place, but sure, I can put that on later if it, if it looks odd without it. I'd love to have music playing in the background. You know, I've had Leonard Cohen on this morning now, Suzanne. And I love I love that music, but the thing is, when you do that on YouTube, they um, take your video off because you're not meant to. I suppose I'm not meant to be using it as a back background for public. I'd need to pay for it or something, which fair enough, you know. Right, what's that like now? Hmm. Okay. And now maybe the area behind the hind quarters here. Yeah, what are you? I wonder what you're thinking about it so far. I got excited. I quite like that it's uh, I can see it there like I quite like that it's so succinct and clear. And when this edge is really clean, I think it'll be helpful. Maybe I'll bring it down to here too to have that clean edge coming up to there. Let's see. And after that then I might do a bit more to that area there, like bring up the face into more detail and the sparkly eye in. <laughs> Starting to feel a bit. Well, I don't want to get too um, trigger happy with this now and I'm making it all neat. So let's see. That's going to be there. I've really loaded the brush each time with lots, lots of paint and then I can push it up to the edge and it'll cleanly cover. What's there already? Every so often I stand back too, just to be sure um, that nothing looks especially odd. Now, something about putting that in means that I need to reapply the red <clears throat> that's here. So I'm using the Jackson's red, the watercolor red here in order to allow this to stand out just a little bit more again, because the blue beneath it just taking the wind from its sails a little bit. <coughs> and it was a little bit messy with that now, so I'm going to clean up this area. I want the leg of the horse to be overlapping the red. And I want the blue of the background 